at the GCSP, we're joined today with um, Ms. Sanam Naragi Andalini. She's co-founder and executive director of the International Civil Society Action Network, or ICANN. Thank you for joining us today, Madam. Thank you very much. It's okay, to how are you enjoying Peace Week? It's been fantastic. Thank you very much. Yes, Thank very you. inspiring. Thank you. And you joined us today um, on one of our panels here at the GCSP for preventing uh, violent extremism. And I wonder, uh, during your discussion, what were some of the key points that you wanted to share? I think our, the, the key point I wanted to share was that when we're talking about violent extremism um, or the prevention of violent extremism, the role of local actors, civil society actors, women's organizations is absolutely pivotal. They are allies in this process. They are not adversaries to government. And they actually have some of the, the most innovative responses. Um, they're trusted in their communities. And um, they don't have an exit strategy. So for them, this is an existential issue. And so what civil society is doing and what we should be thinking about is harnessing the power of those who care, because they're ordinary citizens who've decided to, to become active for their societies. Fantastic. Another aspect of today's uh, discussion, uh, I wanted to know um, what take, key takeaways you may have taken uh, from your co-panelists and also the audience. Mm -hmm. I think, I think, number one, the, the interest in implementation and having an impact on the ground. And the recognition, for example, of one of our colleagues who said that, you know, when we're talking about al-Shabaab areas, it's not ungoverned. It's differently governed. They are providing the services and so forth. And so the onus is back on the international community and on states to provide those basic services of health and education and, and so forth so that our communities are not prone to being radicalized. That, I think, is a critical message. And again, our, our partners in the WASP Alliance and through ICANN have been saying that for a very, very long time as well. OK. And then one last question. What are some of the next steps moving forward? For us, it's to sustain the alliance that we have. Um, it's very hard work to be women on the ground dealing with these issues. And so the solidarity that we can give them, the resources that we can give them, the access and the voice that we can give them is essential. And that's really my job, um, to open up the spaces and continue to be the advocate internationally so that we open the doors and listen to the people from the ground directly and change the, the, the discourse so that it, it's not just preventing counter and violent extremism, but it's actually talking about how do we promote pluralism and equality and, and dignity and peace. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you so much for your time today. Thank you. We're here today at the GCSP with Dr. Colleen Kaiser, Executive Director of the Global Community Engagement and Resilience Fund. Thank you very much for joining us today, Dr. Kaiser. Um, what brought you here today? I was here to chair a panel. It was actually a very exciting panel indeed, looking at how civil society can help develop national action plans to prevent violent extremism. What do you think the, the key takeaways are from today's event? I think there are two. One is that civil society has a critical role to play. The second is that for some reason we're not engaging civil society enough. So we know that they can make a difference, but we don't know how to engage them. What do you think some of the next steps could be? Well, I think we had a, an audience, as always GCSP does. You brought together some very powerful people. We had an audience of government. We had the UN in the room, and I hope they've listened to what they've heard. We had some very credible speakers today really making the case that civil society can make a difference. And what do you think about the power of partnerships? The par power of partnerships are absolutely fundamental, and that indeed is what GCSP is all about, is convening and bringing together different partners. It's easy to say it's difficult to do. We have to choose the right partners, we have to have the right modalities, but absolutely when you get it right, partnerships are transformative. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. At the GCSP today, we're joined with uh, Ms. Catherine Udida. She's head of CVE for Nigeria's Office on the National Security Advisor. Thank you so much for joining us today, madam. Thank you. Um, you're here for Geneva Peace Week. Um, how has it been for you so far? Yes, yeah, it's been a rewarding experience. I've had to listen to a lot of uh, stakeholders uh, discuss PCV and the processes in the different countries, and I have a lot uh, that I've learned. And um, I hope to go and implement the, the lessons learned. Okay. And you joined us today as a panelist um, um, on the topic of preventing violent extremism. Yes. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, your topic, your discussion today, um, and what was one of the key focuses that you wanted to share with the audience? Yes, I discussed um, the processes uh, of uh, that Nigeria um, undertook to produce a policy framework and a national action plan and I uh, tried to share experiences and challenges and uh, brought, about, brought out clearly the, the processes of implementing the National Action Plan and what uh, others can learn from 
how far Nigeria has gone. Okay. And um, in listening to the other panelists and, and also our guests that were here today, were there any key takeaways for you to take back? Yeah, that um, I just uh, was able to confirm that Nigeria is on the right path and that there has to be um, inclusiveness in everything we do, making sure that uh, governments um, interface properly with civil society groups and to ensure that um, we recognize that women and youths and children uh, can also be positive voices. And um, by so doing, uh, it's easy for us to reduce those who are vulnerable to recruitment by the terrorists. Okay, thank, thank you. you so much for your thank time you. today. Thank you. At the GCSP today, we are joined by Madam Hamatsu Alamin. She's the founder of the Network of Civil Society Organizations for Peace as Voices of the Voiceless People. Welcome today, Madam. Thank you very much. Thank you. And how are you enjoying uh, Geneva Peace Week? Really, honestly, it's a very, very amazingly nice society, the Geneva itself. In fact, welcoming visitors, and then I can feel the peace impact everywhere. In fact, even before coming to the Peace Week, I've been. So it's been a great experience for you. Yeah, sure. Fantastic. Um, and now you were a panelist today for us today um, on the topic of preventing violent extremism. And I wonder if there were any key points that you really wanted to share with today's audience. Yes. Really, in fact, um, as right uh, as even pinpointed by the um, theme of these um, uh, celebrations, number key, one factor is how to support civil society organization develop and implement. Therefore, and then in this implementation strategy, women are very, very key. Although I know Sweden, uh, um, Switzerland is a society, in fact, already gendered society, which takes this issue seriously. Therefore, coming to discuss this issue and then promoting women's contribution and then come bringing out to the world what women for example, in our context, in far away West African sub-region, what we have done to succeed, and then now asking, uh, now popularizing it in a community like this, I believe honestly, the message has really reached the right people, and that our voices will be amplified. That women in that part of the world are doing a lot. In fact, that need to be supported, that need to be amplified, and then such actors need also protection and protection and then support, not in terms of cash or something, but honestly, a lot can be done in terms of building our capacities and then networking and then connecting us with international actors, which I believe will even add to secure us and uh, for our own security in the zones we operate and then for the security of those people who are working with us. As you know, we are working in a uh, in, um, society and girl in the culture of silence where nobody talks, nobody speaks, and then the few individual who is seen to be talking and speaking can also can easily be targeted as being um, uh, maybe anti anti forces or anti institutions. So therefore, I believe my message has been heard. And then I have said it earlier, and then I will reiterate it here. Honestly, we need a lot of capacity building because the little that we are I'm doing now, I'm not doing it with my capacity built or trained as a peacemaker. But the sufferings in that part of the country, this, who are the, uh, the abject poverty, the illiteracy, the sufferings, and the humanitarian crisis generated by the insurgency, where my people, particularly women and the children, have been turned street beggars, street hawkers, commercial sex workers, uh, abductees, victims of forced marriage, and everybody has turned me to become an activist, to become a peacemaker. So therefore, we need this to be heard and then be amplified and then be protected so that we can do what we are doing better to our society and humanity in general. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Today at the GCSP, we're happy to welcome Dr. Jide Okeke. He's a senior research advisor at the UNDP Oslo Governance Center. Welcome today, sir. Thank you. Okay. How are you enjoying uh, Geneva Peace Week? Uh, thank you for uh, the question. I think it's, uh, it's, for me, it's a new experience. Uh, this is the first time I'm participating in the Geneva Peace Week. Uh, and what I find to be very uh, interesting is that it is 
putting prevention at the heart of the discourse on sustainable pace. Uh, this is a this is important for several reasons. You've seen that uh, uh, we have seen the cost, economic cost of uh, conflict across the world uh, from uh, the Africa region the, to the Middle East. And uh, it is beginning to be very uh, important for policy makers to put prevention uh, at the heart of the debate on how you would promote peace. And I think that's the main takeaway for me from the Geneva Peace Week. Uh, uh, in the last uh, couple of days. Okay. What are the next steps? Um, for, for us, uh, there are uh, a number of takeaways in terms of uh, you know, how, we want, how we see preventing violent extremism. Uh, as you heard from my discussion today, there are about three important points that I think are relevant. The first uh, is the importance of politics. Uh, oftentimes, we tend to sidestep uh, politics as a, a secondary factor in the whole debate uh, on sustainable peace. But without getting the politics right, uh, it will be difficult for you to begin a conversation on prevention, not least on preventing violent extremism. Uh, and for us, politics means a number of things. It means a number of actors. Uh, it means that you have to bring the right actors on the table. How do you define inclusivity? How do you define those actors that would support the peace process or that would support peace initiatives, both at the local level, but increasingly at the regional level? Uh, what role, uh, for instance, the African Union or other regional organizations have to play in promoting uh, the peace agenda? I think that is the first takeaway. The second, uh, which is linked to the whole deliberate uh, attempt to promote the politics of uh, uh, you know, inclusive uh, prevention, is the need to promote partnerships. I, I think it is beginning to be very obvious amongst uh, multilateral stakeholders that uh, no one single actor has the resources and expertise uh, to uh, intervene in crisis situation. So there is a need to promote synergy and uh, 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 coherence in the way partners are able to you know, engage uh, in peace initiatives, either uh, within the context of conflict prevention or uh, the subset of preventing violent extremism. The, the last point, uh, which I think is an important takeaway, is that despite the proliferation of uh, um, studies on violent extremism and drivers of that violent extremism. Uh, this is only the beginning uh, to begin to distill uh, important local evidence uh, that would inform policy. Research is still very important across the different uh, sectors, be it in the area of youth and violent extremism, the role of women, civil society, uh, and other structural drivers of violent extremism. Uh, but we need to know how we can begin to distill local evidence and how that would inform uh, policy uh, across the different levels, be it at the national level, regional, or even at the international level. Um, so these are, for me, uh, very important takeaways from uh, today's discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you.